I saved you. And I'm here to save you again. Baldur's Gate 3 is becoming one of the biggest games of the year, and rightfully so. It's basically D&D, but in a video game world where you can make choices, explore the world, and save yourself from a horrible, well, I mean, no spoilers, but a horrible fate. And just like D&D, there's a ton of customization you have for your character. From the look of each character, the classes that you choose for them, and even the subclasses for them and their fighting styles, it's all customizable. And if you couldn't tell, I'm a huge fan of both the game and D&D outright. So I decided to take one of these classes and teach you how you can train just like them in real life. You know, what this series is made for. And then we can take it one step further by teaching you a move that you can practice right now in your backyard. And obviously, if you saw the thumbnail for this video, you know we are starting with the fighter. Caddy, mm -hmm. attack from a distance to give us cover. Wolfguard, you- Fort down, What's up guys, it's the only ninja wearing aviators and a superhero hat and welcome to the Modern Ninja channel. This is the Fight Like a Superhero series where I take one of your favorite characters from TV, movies, video games, anime, pretty much anything you can think of and break down their fighting style so you know how you can train like them in real life. And then I break down a move to teach you that you can practice in your backyard. Now, with that said, let's jump into the fighter from Baldur's Gate 3. The fighter is notable for having access to several different fighting styles in the game. Those being archery, defense focus, great weapon fighting, dueling or single weapon fighting, two weapon fighting, and protection fighting. And that last one was way harder than it should have been, so drop a like to show some support. But all of these styles have different benefits assigned to them in the game. Like archery gives you a plus two to attacking rolls with ranged weapons, while defense focuses on giving you a plus one in your armor class. And protection, which is only available for the fighter class, can allow you to make it harder for an enemy to hit someone that you are protecting, kind of like a bodyguard. And the fighter gets to pick any two of those fighting styles, and that combined with the fact that there are over 30 different types of weapons in the game, not counting the different magical variations of each weapon, the possibilities are functionally endless. And that makes putting together this video even harder. Every fighter can be different than the next one. Maybe you're an archer that really focuses on protecting your allies. Or you want to make sure you are really good with your sword and shield so that you can take pretty much any hits. Honestly, how could I even do this for every single option? But I got you. I'm going to make this video multiple choice just like the game does, breaking down each segment of the fighter and letting you pick which two you want to use. So please tell me down in the comments which build you have chosen for yourself. Like I said, you get two of them, so pick which two you want and which weapons you're going to use. But starting off with archery, there are tons of archery styles and types out there, and a lot of the training will depend on which weapon you choose to wield, but in Boulder's Gate, the options are short bows, long bows, crossbows, and and slings. And each one of these has its positive and negative, however, I think the perfect place to start is Kyudo. Kyudo is a Japanese martial art of archery, originating sometime in feudal Japan under the name Kyudo Jutsu and being renamed Kyudo in 1919. This style being able to stand the test of time like it does is no small feat, being a primary battle art through one of the bloodiest times in human history, feudal Japan. That's awesome alone, but it also made it through both World War I and World War II, so that's even more credibility to its name. Beginners of this art often start with a rubber practice bow to get the basic movements down, and then moving to a bow without an arrow to master the more complex parts of pulling. Or I guess it's called drawing, excuse me. And then finally moving on to the full thing, learning how to shoot all types of bows and specifically being excellent at the long bow. Editing DJ here realizing that I said Hema and also included fencing as well, when in reality, fencing isn't technically part of Hema. So just know when I say Hema, I also mean to include fencing as well. Moving to a defense focused style, we're going to dip into Hema. Hema, or historical European martial art, is an obvious choice for learning to use the defensive focused styles that sword and shield would represent. Hema is the catch-all term for the martial arts used 
for nearly half a millennium during the Middle Ages and the Renaissance era. Also, just like before, being effective through one of the most deadly times in human history, but the European side of it. And for many D&D games, including Baldur's Gate, they take inspiration from this time period specifically. I mean, the European dragon myth that we have typically come from this time period, and dragons is half of the name of D&D. And as a catch-all term, you shouldn't be surprised if this style covers a vast array of weapons and details. It's without a doubt the best way to learn how to protect yourself effectively with a shield. On top of actively using your shield, many practitioners still actively practice in suits of armor as well. So we are definitely upping our armor class with the actual medieval armor. Hema is awesome for many, many reasons. And of course that leads into the great weapon fighting, which we are going to use Hema for as well. And they have a list of weapons even bigger than the game Baldur's Gate. I mean, if it's various types of Viking axes and sword, battle axes, great swords, great axes. I mean, if it's an oversized and kind of sharp item, best believe Hema probably got you covered, which again is incredibly convenient for Baldur's Gate 3. But I'm not gonna lie, the convenience doesn't end there. We are moving over to dueling as well, where it also uses a little bit of Hema, just like for the reasons I said before, but not just Hema this time. Of course, yes, rapiers, scimitars, and short swords will absolutely come from here, but we gotta add some other things to make this style fully fleshed out. Kendo will truly take our single sword combat to new heights. I feel like I've used Kendo a lot recently, but it's just so good. I go into it a little bit more in my Scorpion and Urza videos, but the long and short of it is that Kendo or Kenjutsu is one of the longest living sword styles in the world. Originating from before feudal Japan and lasting through both world wars and even till today. I mean, it's currently practiced in 2023 for combat, along with having tournaments every year with an amazing turnout. However, this dueling style really needs one more martial art to put it all together. One of the best weapon styles in the world. That's Arnis, also known as Eskrima or Kali. It's the national martial art of the Philippines. They are known for being able to beat you up with pretty much anything they can find. Sticks, clubs, knives, canes, your mom's frying pan, whatever's around really. And the fact that they train weapons of opportunity basically means that anything you can find can be a weapon. And there's plenty of things to find in Baldur's Gate. Find some mace off of a goblin you killed, Arnis got you covered. Maybe you took an ax off of that bugbear, Arnis got you there too. Maybe you just walked through a village and picked up a brick. Well, yeah, Arnis has also got you there too. And just like him, Arnis is gonna show up on this list more than once as well. I can't think of anything better than Arnis for the two weapon fighting style also. Learning how to do wield anything is a staple of Arnis. May that be two sticks, two swords, a knife and a sword, or any combination you can think of, Arnis is just built different. They are the kings of being ambidextrous, to the point where they even teach beginners how to use weapons before actually throwing a punch. So obviously we had to have that there for our dual wielding skills. We're also going to need to spec into XMA as well. Yes, I know, I was also surprised, but hear me out. XMA is all about mastering your body for performance and athletic ability. Practitioners are not only able to dual wield weapons like swords or katanas, nunchucks, and kamas, but they're able to even dual wield full-size weapons like bow staffs or giant swords. Yes, dual wielding bow staffs. So we absolutely could not miss out on the martial art created by a Power Ranger. And besides, just take a couple levels in Bard and we'll be just fine. We'll be perfect. And lastly, we got to talk about protection. But before we do, here's a word from our sponsor. Hey, I just figured I'd let you guys know that there's new merch in the store. Like if you didn't even know I had a store, I have a merch store and there's new merch in it. So definitely go check it out. There might be something you like, there might not be, but you know, you never know until you know. So go check it out, links down in the description. Back to protection fighting style, this is one of the harder ones at first glance. I mean, aren't all martial arts supposed to be used to protect you? But then I thought about what our goal is. It's to protect a member of our team and keep them safe. And there's one martial art that stands above the rest when it comes to keeping you and others around you safe, and that's Krav Maga. Krav is an Israeli martial art developed by the IDF or Israeli Defense Force. It's a loose combination of Aikido, Judo, Karate, Boxing, and Wrestling, and its main focus is real 
world brutal combat and be used by a country that's literally surrounded by enemies like Israel is, you know it has to be the best. In fact, it's so good that nearly every major military force in the world uses it in some way. Maybe they integrate it into their basic training or higher training, but all of them use it. But that's not all. Also, the police use it, bodyguards use it, FBI, and the Secret Service. They all use it. And so for our fighter, we're also going to use it. I mean, if it's good enough to guard the literal president, it's good enough to also guard your cleric that's just in the back of the group hiding from the bad guy. Now, there are a ton of options here, but what can you expect? It's Boulder's Gate 3. This video is gonna suck to edit. I already know. And so please, subscribe that would really be helpful and as a fighter remember that you get to pick two of these so for real tell me what you got down in the comments i'd love to see uh what styles and what D, &D race you would choose and all that let me know because Man, this video took so much work. But this video is not even over yet. While you do that, I wanna teach you how to use some of these fighting styles currently right now in your backyard. My One of my students, Elise, is a family who is heavily in HEMA. And so they are gonna teach you one HEMA move as well. Like the whole family actually competes regularly. It's super cool. So let's get straight to it. Hi, I'm Elise, and today I'm going to teach you one of the basics of fencing, the lunch. Now, when we're looking at our stance for anything regarding your fencing, it is extreme, not extreme, but slightly different than your classic stance, which is basically your feet are parallel to one another. So, for your fencing stance, you're going to want one foot almost at a 90 degree, not quite, probably like a 60 degree angle, facing away from your other foot. So this will grant you this movement here for your lunge, onto the side of your foot, which a parallel stance, if I try to lunge that same way with a parallel stance, I don't get that same movement and length that I'm going for with my lunge. So before we get fully into our lunge, we're going to cover the basics of our place. So of course you have the blade itself, and then we're going to look at our bell. So this is our finger guard. Your index finger should go into your finger guard, and then below, past the quillion, should be the rest of your fingers, including your thumb. So that is how you hold the blade. Remember, each blade is different, so some of them will be more heavily on the tip, and some of them will be more heavily on your actual hand. So, for your lunge, you're going to want to make sure your tip is at eye level, and you're going to want to make sure that, again, your foot is facing away from your other foot. Lunging in, then shift your weight to your back foot, tip still at eye level. Lunge forward onto the side of your leg, out and twist. Now the reason we twist is if you were to come blade to blade with another blade, you would then, as you're twisting, fight off the other blade and basically overpower the other blade. So once again, you're going to tip at eye level, Shift your weight to your back foot, lunge, twist your blade, come back. One more time, shift your weight to your back foot, tip at eye level, lunge, and twist. Go back. Now, full speed. Ready? How would you feel about helping me kill some evil bastards? Now, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Fight Like a Superhero. I've really been enjoying Baldur's Gate 3. I'm not gonna lie, I've spent so much time playing that game already. It's probably bad. And so if you want me to stream it, like on Twitch or something, let me know and I'll start a new playthrough for you guys. Maybe we could try and build like a ninja character relying on stealth or whatever. Just let me know down in the comments below. But until next time, my name's DJ Moore. This is The Modern Ninja and I'm out. And if you like this video, check out this playlist that'll have all the characters I've done up until now. And until then, I'll see you guys later. I'm on that Bruce Lee flow like water, state of mind. Got me going farther than I ever thought I could have been. Gotta grab a sheet of paper as you know I got the pin. Anybody want to smoke your whole career be looking grim. Out here flashing change while your boy been in the gym. Watch me spitting flames while the frogs try to...